This video is part 2 in the series on how to learn Japanese and in this episode I'm going to be covering specific aspects of how to use Anki as well as share some Anki related knowledge and tips that I feel are very useful to know. If you have not seen the first episode you should definitely check it out because that video covers the fundamentals you need to know to get started with learning Japanese as well as some things related to Anki such as why we actually use it and how to get it properly set up that I won't be repeating in this video. And I'm also going to be using a deck called the Core 2 k 6 k deck which you can download from the link in the description and I'm going to give you suggestions on how to use the deck more efficiently, so I assume that you already have your Anki and the Core 2k6 k deck set up, which I demonstrated how to do in the previous video. So first of all, let's look at this card from the Core 2k6 k deck. On the front, it has the word that you have to learn, and on the back, it has the meaning, reading, an example sentence, the translation of that sentence, and optionally an image. I'll be covering all of these fields in a moment, but before that, in the first video, I said that the way you review a card is that you're going to be trying to get the reading and meaning of that word on the front of the card correct, which is honestly pretty much all you need to know and if you follow that guideline you're going to be completely fine, but in reality reviewing doesn't have to be that binary. Over time you'll develop a more advanced intuition on when you should hit again and when you should hit good. For example, I'd say that it's fine to hit good even when you didn't get the English translation of the word completely correct but had a decent hunch for what it meant. And I've also experienced this kind of a phenomenon where I get a card and I subconsciously read the Japanese word correctly in my head, but then for some reason I say it incorrectly when I read it consciously. In which case, I think it's also fine to hit good as well, but if your gut feeling tells you that you should hit again, then you probably should. And another option that you have, instead of hitting good or again, is to bury the guard, so you could review it tomorrow and make the decision then when you review it again. But I do have to warn you that if you get too loose with your reviews and hit good even when you shouldn't, what might end up happening is that you're going to have cards with very long intervals that you'll feel like you're never even seen before. Whereas, if you're too strict with your reviews and hit again when you shouldn't, you're going to have too many reviews and Anki will start taking too long. Everyone seems to be doing Anki slightly differently. Some people say that they can learn 50 new words a day in an hour, while for others, even 20 new words a day feels unrealistic. Which is why I don't recommend matching to other people's standards, but instead building that intuition of how to do your reviews by yourself over time. Alright, so let's have a more in-depth look at the fields of a card again. A question I keep getting over and over again is that do you have to get the sentence correct as well or only the word? And do I have to read the sentence every time or can I just skip it? And my answer to both of them is no, you don't have to read them every time, but it's a good idea that if it's a new card, then you should read through the sentence to, you know, understand what context the word comes from. In my opinion, the sentences are only there to serve as an example. Some people say that they read through the sentence on every single review, but I personally never did that because I feel like reading them on every single review, on every single card, every single day just takes too long, and those sentences also might contain words that you haven't learned yet. Although, I will show you an extremely useful trick that you can do with the sentence later in the video. And another question I get is that should you read the word out loud? To which I'd also say no, especially when you're a beginner, because you might not even realize when you're saying it wrong and you might develop bad muscle memory and I think it just slows you down and doesn't add much value. Although, I do think that it's really valuable to listen to the word audio every single time though. The sentence audio is very valuable too, but I personally sometimes review my cards too fast to play the whole sentence. Although, I don't I don't think that it's necessarily required to listen to audio every single time though, especially because sometimes you want to do your reviews in public without blasting the audio through a speaker or wearing headphones. So what about the image of the card? Do images on Anki cards provide any value? Personally, I think images only provide value in a very specific way. If you made the card yourself, let's say through a TV show, then a screenshot from the same moment of the TV show has the value of reminding you what context that word or sentence came from. I personally remember the context pretty well from the sentence alone, but after a few months or even let's say a few years, the memory of said context will become rather muddy, so if you have an image on the back of the card that reminds you of that context, it can be pretty helpful. But I personally still don't really use them in my self-made cards. Other than that, I don't think they provide much value towards learning other than just being fun and making your Anki reviews a bit more interesting. And I also don't think they have any negative effect on learning either, unless you put them on the front of the card. Alright, so that pretty much covers all the common fields of a card, so now I want to talk a bit about different card types. So by default, the cards in the Core 2 k 6 k deck are in a format known as a vocabulary card. This means that the front of the card only has 
has the word that you're supposed to learn without any further context. While as, a sentence card is a card that has an entire sentence on the front, that you're supposed to either read and understand entirely or learn some specific concept from. So both of these card formats are completely valid and usable, and they also have their own upsides and downsides. For example, vocabulary cards are rather quick to review and they give you a good recognition ability of the word and kanji, but sometimes they can be really frustrating because of the lack of surrounding context. And sentence cards can be great because they have an entire sentence on the front, which means that they have more context and potentially more to learn from, but they can take longer to review and perhaps sometimes the context helps a bit too much if you just want to focus on some specific word or kanji. I personally did the entire Core 2 k 6 k deck in the vocabulary card format, but now the cards I make myself are kind of a mixture of both a vocabulary card and a sentence card. So basically, I have a word bolded or highlighted within a sentence, and I'll mostly focus just on the word and only look at the sentence when I need further context. This way, I can still do my reviews rather quickly because I don't have to read the sentence every single time, but I'll still have enough context to not struggle with similar looking words when I need to look at the sentence. The Core 2 k 6 k deck definitely has a lot of similar looking words, or words that literally are the same but just have a different reading or meaning, and they will definitely trip you up, so what I used to do was to mark duplicates or similar looking cards with some specific colored flag. But I think a really good option to consider is to change the format of the card to include the Japanese sentence on the front for further context. But still keep the target words separately on the front as well, so you could only look at the sentence if you want to or need to. I honestly think that it's a really good idea to do this because it will save you a lot of time as well as spare you from the headaches created by similar looking words. And I also don't think that it has that many negative side effects either, and if it does, the positives will most likely outweigh the negatives. I mean, when you're immersing, you're going to have that extra context anyway, and from my own experience, I can learn very well, if not even better, with these kinds of cards, and I can also take more new words a day. But if you don't want to have a sentence for every single card, you can also just edit the specific cards that you want to have more context on, and just copy-paste the sentence into the word field. Okay, so now I want to cover a few useful features and buttons that you should know about. So first of all, you can undo a review if you for example accidentally revealed the answer or hit the wrong button. Then we also have the check media and check database functions which sometimes fix issues with syncing and they also save some space on unused files. But if you're still having issues with syncing, you might have to force override a sync which means that you can either force download your data from AnkiWeb or force upload your local data to AnkiWeb. But you should be extremely careful that you choose the correct option because otherwise you might delete your data. And if you're anything like me and have a gamer sleep schedule aka occasionally stay awake past 5am, you might need to change the time Anki resets your daily reviews. And you can actually also use this feature as a last resort to get your daily reviews in when it's already too late. For example, if you were in the middle of doing your reviews but the clock hit 5am, you can change the reset time to 6am, finish your reviews and then set it back to 5 a.m. In the stats section, you can see all kinds of statistics, for example, how many reviews you have due tomorrow, how many hours you've used Donkey for, how many cards are left in the deck, and in the browser, you can see the history for every single card, which is sometimes pretty fun to see, and you can even browse the cards in the order of laps count or number of reviews to see which cards you've had the most trouble with. So as for add-ons, I personally didn't really use any add-ons for a really long time, but I recommend looking into the Mikaku Anki extension, link in the description. Also, the reason I say not to use the hard or easy buttons is because they change the ease factor of the card, which can mess with the interval of that specific card. It's not a huge deal if you do press those buttons, I mean, I did it a lot in the past, but it's better to just keep it simple and only use the again and good buttons. And a quick note about the again button, I just want to say that Anki is not school. Getting an answer wrong and hitting again doesn't mean that you failed, it just means that you hit the again button and nothing else. And I mean, that's literally what Anki and spaced repetition is designed for. So, in the case that you forgot a concept, hitting again is just going to help effectively strengthen your memory for said concept. So, Please don't feel down when you're having one of those days where you seem to be hitting the again button a lot because that's just a part of the process. Also, some people might be wondering whether or not you should learn kanji separately through some decks such as RRTK. 
Personally, I don't think you do because you're going to learn kanji pretty well just through the core 2k6 deck and later through sentence mining. And I'm going to go much more in depth about learning kanji and words through sentence mining in the next video. However, if you still want to, you can take like 1 to 3 kanji per day from some separate kanji deck to get the minimum effective dose without having to spend too much time or energy on it. I personally never really bothered though because I find it kind of boring and indirect, but some people say it helps them so it's up to you. So finally, I'd also like to mention how to do Anki throughout the day. Again, this is something that you should figure out by yourself, but to bring myself as an example, I personally always do my Anki throughout the entire day whenever I can. However, I usually do as many reviews as I can the moment I wake up, often without even having gotten out of bed yet, nor being able to properly keep my eyes open. After that, I usually do my reviews during breakfast, when commuting, in the bathroom, and so on, but if I still haven't finished my Anki by then, I'll just sit down and finish all my reviews before it gets too late. And generally, I do recommend finishing Anki as early as you can, because otherwise you might forget to do Anki, or it might get really late and you'll have to sacrifice sleep to finish all your reviews, which sometimes does happen to me. Alright, so to wrap up this video, I'd like to introduce and thank the sponsor of this video, italki. Italki is an online language learning platform which connects language learners with language teachers from all over the world. On italki, you can take one-on-one -on -one lessons with natives and certified teachers with proven experience in more than 150 languages whenever you want, wherever you want. And because italki lets you freely choose your teacher from over 20,000 tutors, you can rest assured that you can find the teacher who clicks best with you personally. I checked out some of the teachers on italki and honestly, I was surprised. There are so many interesting teachers who all have their own personalities, approach to teaching, and areas of the language that they're specialized in that they can help you improve. It's safe to say that thanks to having such a wide choice of teachers, you can definitely find the one who works best with you, which will help make language learning more enjoyable and interesting and therefore more effective. And italki isn't only for beginners. If you're already an advanced language learner, there are many teachers on italki who can give you personalized feedback to help you find areas in which to improve, which can be extremely valuable at such a level. And the really good thing about italki is that you don't have to commit to a subscription because you pay per lesson, which is really great because it gives you a lot of freedom with your schedule and also lets you try out different teachers if you so please. You can register on italki for free. And they're starting off 2022 with a language challenge where they're offering various rewards such as coupons and even up to $500 worth of credits that you can use to level up your language learning. So, if you're interested, click on the link in the description below to learn more. So, anyway, huge thanks for watching, and if you have any questions about Anki or the Core 2 k 6 deck, feel free to leave them down in the comments below, and make sure to stay tuned for part 3 in the series of how to learn Japanese, because in that episode, I'll be covering various things related to sentence mining, so it might be a pretty useful video to check out. So I'll see you there and thanks for watching again.